What is going on guys, Jack here and welcome to episode 65 of The Road to Glory here with FC United of Manchester. Hopefully you guys are good. Uh, as always, and I guess as promised we are back with the Chelsea League Cup quarter-final tie. We are at gig lane for this tie, I'm looking forward to this, but a few bits and pieces of transfer news to cover. Um... Uh, and as well as the fixtures, we'll start with the fixtures and then I can talk about uh, who's coming in for the start of January. So anyway, the last episode was against Stoke. Since then in the league, five games, three wins, two losses, could be better, could be worse. Um, we started off the month with a slightly disappointing tie against Newcastle. Uh, we actually went 1-0 down in the second half of this game and fought it back to 1-1. And then in the dying embers of the game... Justin Palmer for them grabbing a goal uh, to get Newcastle a 2-1 win. That was pretty tough to take, but on the back of this, we recovered well to get an important 1-0 home win against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Really good stuff there. Barney getting a goal. Uh, probably a deserved win in the end, although looking at the stats, the game was almost dead 50-50, but I do feel as if we were the better side from what I saw in that game. We then had a tough away tie against QPR, who won this game are a fairly well-established Premier League team. Looking at their league finishes, last year was slightly disappointing by their standards, but they've been a top-half team for the last uh, four seasons. In fact, uh, of the last seven seasons, six of them have been spent in the top half, so they're a good team. Uh, in the end, uh, we lost 2-0, they got both their goals fairly uh, kind of either side of half time really close together um, tough to take looking at the stats we n were never really in control of the game and they were the better side uh, Adani got injured this game which was tough as well uh, I didn't have a substitute centre back who I felt was good enough uh, I guess to come out and do a job for us so it was quite hard to defend uh, after he'd taken that knock anyway on the back of that we really needed to get a win I identified these five fixtures all as winnable and I really wanted to at least win a uh, kind of three of the five so it was important that we got some wins on the board and we got one here an important one against Norwich City at home Barboza grabbing a hat trick uh, John Flanagan sent off for them but in honesty uh, we, we were all over them from the off here Barboza the Brazilian really settling into the side uh, obviously uh, he's kind of he's not had the easiest starts of the season he'd only scored one goal in nine games prior to the kind of recent run of results however uh, today was a really good kind of game for him a bit of fortune about a few of the goals that one there cross that hits Ruddy and goes in uh, apparently it was going in and so it's his goal so that was nice to see him grab a goal there uh, despite the kind of odd circumstances uh, he grabbed his second of the game from a towering header at the back post pretty good to see from I don't know I guess with a technically gifted kind of striker you don't really tend to see um, them winning the ball that much in the air but anyway uh, the next goal uh, another good goal by him, to be honest. It's just lurking there, back post, aware of the threat, and that was a really good result. Uh, since he's come to the club, Barbos has had a, he's had a good start. He's improving as a footballer as well. He's still only 18. He's 19 in a few months, but really, this guy could be moulded into whatever kind of forward I want. He's got all the stats to and kind of the makings of a good forward. It was up for me really to just decide where I want to kind of invest his training time. I'm currently focusing on speed. I think my aim is going to be to really give him a pacey attacking threat like Shane Barney, but have him so he has like the creative elements as well. But to be honest, this guy could well, well, well become kind of one of the best players in the world, at least in my eyes. But anyway, there's one more month game this month. It was a 1-0 away win against Leicester. Slightly fortunate with this result to get the win. Probably didn't really deserve it on paper, but Tarasov was there when it counted to grab a goal. The Latvian grabbing his uh, third league goal of the season. I mean, he's doing a pretty good job. He's not had the easiest start to time in the Premier League, but 12 appearances, average rate of 7.2. Not too shabby, if I might say so myself. So looking at our squad, I mean, to be honest, the squad's performed so well this year so far. Um, my aim was UEFA Cup, uh, a push. Uh, at the moment, we find ourselves in uh, fifth. As I said, uh, we have got a really tough sequence of results in the next few games. Uh, we've got... Uh, Southampton, Chelsea, Liverpool, Everton, Arsenal, Man City. You know, that that's a really tough set of fixtures. It's never going to be easy. So it'll be interesting to see where we are on the back of those results, kind of at the halfway mark of the season once we've played all those games. Uh, Peltola is on the, uh, on the clean sheets record as well, which is good to see the finished goalkeeper. Really a testament to how well we've been playing at the back in terms of defending this year. Something that we kind of struggled with in recent years. So that's that. 
Uh, look at the transfer centre, just a few players to tell you about. You know the drill. There's a few of these players who you will have already seen, but I'm going to cover them anyway. We have Casca, uh, the 17-year-old Brazilian forward, uh, only just turned 17. He's going to be joining us in August next year when he, on his 18th birthday. Can't move before then. We have jo, Jao Jose, the 17-year-old striker, 17 finishing. Uh, this guy's coming to the club for 1.9 million, I want to say. I can't tell you off the top of my head, or can I? Uh, 1.8 million. I mean, 1.8 million for this guy. Uh, lots of good talent in this guy. Uh, he's got potential to improve. Uh, really nice attacking stats, and I'm sure he'll develop well at the club. We then have uh, Toshasi Matizu. Uh, reason for getting this guy, he's, he's a half decent player, but I'm hoping by buying one of the Japanese internationals that we might b boost shirt sales in the Middle East, and uh, Middle East uh, in Asia. What the hell am I on about, Jack? Um, but no, just you know, by getting um, this guy in to Toshashi Matsui. Um, I mean, he's not necessarily a bad player either. He's played a few games at top level in the um, Japanese Prem, and I don't know. I feel like he might be a half decent signing for us. We then have Arfazinho, the uh, Brazilian centre back, a uh, good kind of towering player. I mean, he's 190 centimetres tall. Nice height on him. Nice kind of ability to win the ball in the air, and I'm looking forward to him. We then have Jonathan Farias, who's coming for 11.5 million. This guy, fantastic left back. I've recently signed him. I'm really excited about the prospect of this guy. I mean, he's such a well-rounded off like left back. He has the stats of a left wing back, but he's got a really he's got something about in this lad. Um, I mean, I don't know. When you have a, a really attacking left back who has the good creative elements as well, usually that's kind of screwed up by the fact they can't tackle or they can't mark. Whereas this guy's really kind of the full package. Perhaps his bravery and uh, and aggression let him down a little, and his jumping's going to cause him to lose a bit in the air. But I mean, his 15 ahead and makes up for it. And I think he's going to be an important element of our first team playing at left back. Uh, then we have um, Pablo, uh, the covering centre back. Uh, he's a really good player, good pacey, 20 year, 22 year old Brazilian. Then I have Pedro Paulo, 17 year old Brazilian. There's kind of a theme emerging here of really young Brazilians coming to the side. I really want to craft some of these guys into kind of really continental players, and I'm looking forward to having them at the club. And I think this guy's got he's got some good stats about him for his age. So I'm looking forward to having him at the club. Uh, he'll be coming um, on the 9th of June in 2021. Uh, looking forward to having him there. He'll be good. Uh, one last player who I have avoided covering is David Hernandez. The reason for this being is that although he's got a work permit being appealed tomorrow, I'm not sure if he's going to come to the club simply because I can't afford the transfer fee that I put in for him. Which is silly, I know, but I, I want to keep an eye out on this guy because he's a really good technical uh, right winger and certainly a player I'd love to have at the club. So keep your eyes open. This guy may be coming, he may not be. We'll find out. But anyway, straight into today's game, we are playing um, Chelsea. We're playing Chelsea away, I want to say. So it's not going to be an easy game by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I'm looking forward to the challenge. It's going to be an interesting tie. Uh, looking at the fixture, oh, it's at home to Chelsea. Well, I feel like we have a chance then. I felt like we had a chance anyway, but now I really feel like we have a chance. So we'll see how we get on here. Team selection, I've already done all this stuff. Uh, Snoozing Bird's got an injury, but he's the goalkeeper. He can come on if desperate, but I think in eight years of being at the club, I've never ever had to substitute my goalkeeper uh, during a game due to either be that a sending off or an injury to the keeper. Uh, looking at of how we're lining up, both teams lining up fairly similarly. Is that James McCarthy? It is. Uh, kind of surprised to see him at Chelsea. They've still got Ramirez. Just having a look at a few of their players. Ramirez. Gaston Ramirez is a beast. Um, Matt Phillips from, Bol uh, from Blackpool. I've got the Bolton Blackpool fever kind of problem I had last year when I kept getting them well not last year in the championship where I kept calling Blackpool Bolton for some reason but anyway uh, Peltola's not conceding in 217 goals Ruben Mayo will make his 100th career appearance if brought on Christopher Brown will make his 175th well let's see how we get on here then uh, we'll let Mr Rooney take the pre-game team talk I'm just going to go with calm calm 
play without any pressure on you, then I'm going to go passionate, I have faith in you, go out there and make a difference. Passionate, I have faith in you, go out there and make a difference. And defence, passionate, I have faith in you, go out there and make a difference. And everyone's happy. And let's get straight into this tie. Oh, I forgot to mention, I mentioned it after the game, but Shane Barney is now an England international player, which is really cool to see. Um, he doesn't have the best stats, but to see him kind of playing at international level is really good. Just going to switch to 2D view as they score. Hopefully you guys saw that. Ball came in, top one back post for Chelsea, scoring after four minutes. Not the start I wanted. Matt Phillips using his pace down the wing. We let him have too much space and Tob on just found some space lurking at the back post to hammer the ball home. So that is not the start I wanted, but we now need to fight back and show why we are FC United of Manchester and really show you know our spirit because that's something that we've done throughout this entire Let's Play. Uh, it's going to be tough though, you know, Chelsea, really good side, but I do have faith in my lads on any day to go and get a result against teams just because of the way we play. And Peltola's just done a derpy goalkeeper glitch. I don't have faith in us anymore. Keep calm and blame Sports Interactive. I mean, what the fuck? I, I don't even know what to say. I really don't. If anyone has any suggestions for how I should have commentated that goal... Write down your write down your description of that goal in the description in the comments. Wow. Well, there goes our chances of League Cup glory unless we can make some crazy comeback in the second half. Um really not sure what to make of that goal. I'm just gonna tell the guys, calm. You've been unlucky. The unlucky card gets whipped out and everyone relaxes and motive gets motivated. Passionate. I have faith in you to improve. Strike force, I have faith in you to improve. Look at how well everyone's reacting. Let's give let's give Peltola a goal a go uh, a team talk. You can improve, Peltola. You really can improve after letting in that goal. Uh, so the defensive ratings on our team were really poor there. So maybe that's where we're going wrong. We're just not defending very well. Hoping that, that team talk's gonna spare on the lads and get us playing better in this half. Twenty five minutes left for us to make an impact. Um Oh, okay, there's a chance. I was about to make a sub, but if there's a chance, I suppose we have to watch it. If we go 3-0 down, that's going to be really disappointing, but who knows. Got to get the ball out there. Paltola collects. We've got a chance, maybe. No, we haven't. False alarm. They're now going to go up and score. I have no faith whatsoever. I've lost it all. I've lost the faith, guys. <laughs> And Tobin score. See, 3 now. We'll make some subs anyway. Why don't we rotate on the people who whine about not playing first team football and give them a run out? Uh, Shane Barney's not had a good game today, so I'm going to bring on Moyano. And we'll bring on uh, Christopher Brown as well. Bring on three kind of attacking minded players who have been saying that they would like a little bit more first team football. Give them an opportunity here. We've got nothing left to play for with 15 minutes left other than to try and keep some players happy. So that's what we'll do. Uh, looking at the stats, we've just not turned up today, which is really disappointing and hard to take. Uh, you've got to wonder what if that goal hadn't gone in by a poltologist screwed up. I think goalkeeper is a position which I will be looking to improve in the future. Uh, ball comes in, Korta tips the ball over. I think Moyano almost scored from a cross. But no, um, you know, guys... <sighs> I'm going to be trying to strengthen the squad in January. Uh, but as you've seen, I've got a few really strong defenders coming in who are hopefully going to bolster our defensive unit because that is kind of where our weakness lies at the moment. And I do believe that those players that I've brought in, the Brazilian lads, are going to make a difference. And it's going to be tough to kind of find a starting eleven. but if we rotate them around, it's possible. Looking at that goal, actually, um, two of the subs, Mayo and Brown, would actually linked up for it. So if we made a comeback now and all the subs got the goals, I'd claim I was some tactical genius. But in reality, I really can't see it having an impact on the game. And it's not going to. There's 10 seconds left. I think that's pretty much GG. 3-1. Not the result I was looking for, but it could have been a lot worse. Um, Tabon was really good against us today, which is tough to take. I'm just going to tell the guys... Um, you are unlucky. And everyone relaxes and gets motivated. See, guys, if in doubt, just tell them they've been unlucky, even if they've not been. But anyway, um, just a quick look, because I mentioned this during the commentary, and I want to show you guys it. Shane Barney, England international, one appearance, 
three goals. I mean, <laughs> I mean, who who would have thought that Shane Barney would get a hat trick on his debut for England? But he did. He's in a friendly against Switzerland. I'm going to show you the goals. Um, really awesome to see him come up and you know play for England. Um, the fact that he's kind of playing for a fairly small club in ours, and the fact that he's worked so hard over the last three or four years, he's like really honed his game. Obviously, he was second top, top goal scorer in the Premier League last year, the year before ch- Championship top goal scorer. L- l- year before that, I think he was fourth top goal scorer in League Two, uh, League One even. And he's really shown some real kind of class and quality over the years and he's shown potential he's still only 23 that has to be remembered and the other good advantage with Shane Barney is he's a home at grown he's a grown at club player which means that when we get into the European qualification and stuff I can register him as one of the homegrown players of the side which is really good Um, kind of got to thank MK Dons for that one I suppose but anyway, Barney got his first goal in this England game uh, from a free kick, which he had 10 free kick takings. So why he was taking it, I'm not sure. Maybe he's the only left-footed player in the team, but still a really good finish by him. Uh, I don't think he scored this one, if I remember correctly. I'm trying to remember because I watched back these highlights already. Yeah, Will Hughes, you know, the, the blonde beast from Derby, grabbing a goal to make it 2-1 England, obviously going down very early on. And from this, Shane Barney grabbed two to make it 4-1 and to get England the win. Um, absolutely insane stuff by him. Using his pace, you, you'll, you'll see here. It's a Shane Barney finish, I do believe. Or is this one not the Shane Barney finish? There was one of these goals and I was just like... That epitomises Shane Barney as a footballer. Just his pace to explode inside uh, and get on the ball. I suppose that was a Shane Barney finish in a sense. He's just there. Shane Barney, he's like the Michael Owen and Gary Lineker hybrid. He's the player who will put, who has the pace just to absolutely terrorise defences and Michael Owen. And he's not going to do much else for you other than score, but he'll score plenty. But then he has kind of the Gary Lineker elements of him in just being there, like the poacher lurking in the right place at the right time. And he's clinical in front of goal. But anyway, that was his hat trick there. Really good stuff to see him get that. Um, so I mean, it's crazy. I mean, 23 years old now. He only made three under-21 appearances for England. He's now made one up a cap uh, and got three goals. He's just signed a new five-year deal at the club, which is awesome as well, because you guys may remember who's struggling to get him to sign a new contract. His stats are ridiculous. He's actually improving still even now. Uh, looking at his stats of this year, five league goals in 13 games. Uh, not the craziest stats, but eight goals in 16 games in total isn't too shabby. Looking at his uh, bibliography, Barney's own recognition in the footballing community for his achievements. Named uh, Empower Championship Player of the Month on two occasions. Empower Championship Player of the Year. Empower Championship Top Goal Scorer Runner-Up. England... Premier League top goal scorer runner up and um, England Golden Shoe runner up. So I mean, when when you're in the Golden Shoe Award, which I can't remember how this is worked out. I think it's done on like average goals per game. But for him to be up there, that that's mental. I don't think anyone could argue with the fact that getting that, considering we finished ninth last year, is absolutely ridiculous. But seriously, now this guy. I was contemplating selling him, but I think he's going to be here now for a while. Stats not the greatest, but this guy turns up on days, makes his goals, uh, like you know, gets goals when it counts, and that's all you can really ask from a player. But anyway, guys, um, that's this episode done and dusted. I wanted to kind of just cover Shane Barney in a bit of detail, give him his moment in the glory. He's kind of one of my favourite players in the save along with Glenn Stewart. Um, Glenn Stewart, let's have a quick look at him as well. Why not? 31 caps now at the age of 23. Still improving in all elements of his game and still one of the best centre-backs um, at the club and probably one of the best centre-backs full stop, to be honest. I really rate the guy. Um, and it's nice to have players like this guy and Barney who you've nurtured for years and who are finally coming big for you. Uh, in other news, just quickly, I asked the board for a stadium and they rejected it uh, and now we're working on upgrading our facilities. So... That's some good stuff, but um, yeah, we're still not getting a new stadium. And I was actually looking at it, and it's looking like there's a kind of high chance that when I do eventually get given permission to build a stadium, that I might get my name on it, just because I'm the, one of the only club legends, and because the club doesn't have much of a history in terms of kind of historic figures. That may well be something that happens. Um, I mean, I don't know why we're not getting a new stadium built. I requested at the start of November. If I show you the, our average attendance, we've got 12,341 people coming. And our attendance by percentage uh, 
capacity is 98.23. If you're filling your stadium by 98% every week and you've got the money to expand it, I can't work out why you wouldn't expand the stadium. One of those things, I suppose. But guys, anyway, just wrapping up. Thank you for watching, as always. If you've got any comments with regards to the series, questions, tips, tricks, anything, let me know down below. Hit the cheeky like, but uh, cheekily hit the like button if you enjoyed the video as well. And other than that, I'll talk to you guys in a bit. And those sirens in the background—they're coming for me. I'm out. Bye.